I don't even really know how to start this one off, but let me just say this is a uh, risky business from one Ravens fan. First question came from my guy, Ryan. He said, let me first say that we actually have a good team. I say this because we have proven that we can win with and without our star players. Uh, I think our owner and GM realize this as well. Most people that are solid investors do something called diversification. They rarely put all of their money into one asset. It's too risky. So I think y'all see where he is going. See where I'm going here? I could be wrong, but I don't see Steve breaking the bank for Lamar, especially since we have a backup that plays very similar to him. So here's the question. How good could we be if Steve and EDC decided to not pay Lamar, but instead diversify their investments into Roquan, the defense, a stud wide receiver one and Snoop. I'm just taking off my fan hat for a moment and putting on my business hat. I think you need to take off that business hat too. Um, but no, I, ugh, that's ah, that's uh, we we've been down this road before. We've been down this road before. Um, with the whole Tyler Huntley is cool. Tyler Huntley, he's not bad. Tyler Huntley is also. Not Lamar Jackson. Uh, Tyler Huntley, we, we remember last year um, where Tyler Huntley started every game that the Ravens went into preparing as Tyler Huntley, preparing Tyler Huntley to be the starter, they lost. Every single one. The one game where Tyler Huntley won, they didn't prepare for him to be the starter. And neither did the Bears. And he won. But every single game with preparation by the Baltimore Ravens, every single game with Lamar Jackson out by the Baltimore Ravens that Tyler Huntley was the starter and they prepared for him as a starter, they lost. Now, not saying that, oh, just because he lost every game in 2021, then um, it's not saying that it, that would be the case moving forward. But wouldn't you much rather like have a Lamar Jackson than a top, like, really? And I, I see what you're saying about not investing your all into one position, but I, you don't have to invest. If they were to invest in Lamar Jackson, it doesn't have to be this extreme where, oh, well, we invested into Lamar Jackson, now we can't do anything else. We pay Lamar Jackson, now we can't get any other good player. We can't sign any other free agents. We can't do a thing. We can't pay nobody else. That is not the case. So I I do see a scenario where uh, they do decide not to pay Lamar. Um, I don't think it would be a good scenario at all. I don't think it would be a wise scenario at all. But the way that they have moved thus far, it kind of seems like it could be going in that in that direction. I hope that that doesn't happen. I think I, I hope that something just changes all of a sudden to where they're like, all right, hey, we about to break the bank for Lamar. But yeah, we'll see how that goes. But for this, your 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 proposal to where they pay Roquan Smith. Pay the defense. I mean, that stuff is gonna happen regardless. Like those two, those two are happening whether people want it to or not. That's going down. It has been going down like that for years. But and then put their investments into Roquan Smith, the defense, and the stud wide receiver one and Snoop. Now that wide receiver one part, that's just that's not how they get down. So I don't see that changing. Um, but yeah, I, I can't get with this plan. Yeah, this like a dream and you know just what i mean you see my boy he like got to made it how to made it boy he's a fan and he like the ravens like the ravens and you know just what i mean you too team keep it clean you see my boy he like got to made it how to made it boy that's my homie ain't that right and graven right and graven so team keep it clean welcome to another episode questions from subs and let's uh let's see what this next question is um it came from my guy jonathan 
He said, Hey, Raven, just wanted to ask, what was your thoughts about the Ravens' offensive line? They have been gelling together and looks like the game, looks like game to game, they're getting better and better. That's true. And also, well, okay, so before the also part, yes, they have been getting better and better, more and more comfortable. Ronnie Stanley being back and Ronnie Stanley playing more and Ronnie Stanley being healthy is no coincidence to the offensive line looking a lot better. Straight up. Uh, and, but anyway, he said, oh, he also said, um, what do you think about Lamar's recent frustration with the delay of game? Do you think he's upset because of the rhythm, breaking penalties, or is it that, or is it that on top of him being in his contract year? I, I, I just think when, with the delay of game, it's frustrating because you hurt yourself. You hurt yourself, and I think it's probably built up frustration with the Ravens, their, their self-inflicted wounds. And I know he got to be tired of that. Um, he, he's been a part of some of them self-inflicted wounds. The offensive line has, everybody has. Um, but I'm sure he's just tired of it. And I know, like, some people are like, oh, man, that was immature. Lamar Jackson going off on his teammates in the middle. No. Because, again, we've seen Brady do that plenty of times. People say, oh, man, wow, that, that's some great leadership right there, man. Well, Lamar do it, do it, then they, oh, man, no, no, that's immature. No. But anyway, he, he had another also. He said, also, uh, with this being possibly his last year with the Ravens, could the pressure of keeping his promise of winning a Super Bowl, um, could this be all that that is on his mind? Could be. Could be. Um, it could be. And he said, uh, just my thoughts. We'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Keep up the good work and go Ravens. Appreciate it, Jonathan. Um, yeah, I mean, but think about this. Even even without the, the whole Super Bowl talk. We know he said, hey, when he got drafted, y'all going to get a Super Bowl out of me. Um, but even like throughout the years, so much has been on you. So much. Um, a lot has continued to be on his shoulders uh, he has had to be Superman so much, and it can weigh on you. It, it can weigh heavy on you, especially if um you you almost you have to be almost. Or sometimes you got to be better than perfect, and a lot of times if you're not perfect, then it's like people try to tell you tear your world down if you're not perfect, and say, oh well, this is why this. Oh, oh this is why he don't deserve that. Oh, that's why he does, and. After a long time, I think that, that that stuff could just, like I said, it could just weigh heavy on you. If that has, if that's consistently happening game after game, season after season, week after week, year after year. OBJ to Baltimore. Next question came from my guy Tyler. He said, hey, what's going on? I'll keep it short. With Bateman going down for the rest of the season, what are the chances we go out and get Odell Beckham Jr.? Thanks for all the great content. Hey, Tyler, I appreciate it. Um, I, I think there is uh, probably a negative three chance that, the negative three percent chance that the Ravens get uh, Odell Beckham Jr. It's just a move that I, I I think it would make sense, but I just don't see it happening at all. Questioning Rashad Bateman's motives. Next question came from James. He said, "Hey, Engraven, hope you and the family are doing well. Hey, we, we're doing pretty good. I appreciate it. Uh, I consistently watch your videos in the gym each day. As hearing current Ravens news fuels my workouts. Whoa, hey, <laughs> hopefully nothing that we say or nothing that the Ravens do it gets you too heated. I don't need you throwing the weights at nobody. But anyway." Uh, he said, at the time I'm writing this, the news of Bateman's decision to end his season and get surgery has just come out. I'm very curious about the timing of this whole situation. Bateman has known for at least a week that his foot was not right, but decided to proceed with surgery after the trade deadline. Do you think that is a coincidence? Oh, are you saying like he wanted to try to make sure his spot was safe for some? Well, you know what? Let me just... Let me read what you got to say. He said, I want to believe he's always thinking about the team. However, part of me thinks he did not want to announce he was getting season ending surgery until after the deadline. So the Ravens could not trade for a replacement that could be better than him. He's made it clear he wants to be the guy in Baltimore, and I believe he will be. But this situation was a head scratcher. Teams make business moves that are in the best interest of the team. But maybe players also make moves that are in the best interest of any given team. Um, please let me know your thoughts on all of this. And thanks so much. I, I, I never thought about that. Uh, before, um, I mean, the NFL is a business. Ravens are a business. Uh, Rashad Bateman, he is a uh, sort of a what a, a private private contractor. Um, so he he got to take care of himself. Uh, but I um I don't I, I never thought about that until you said it. Um, not not to say that that's what he did. Uh, but I think it would um it would be up to the Ravens really. Uh, Cause they like they knew Rashad Bateman was hurt, 
he knew he was hurt. It ain't like like he could have kept his injury like a secret from them or anything like that. I'm sure that they, they knew and understood the severity of it. Um so nah, I I I I wouldn't say that Rashad Bateman did that. Like I said, I I don't know, but I I, I wouldn't think that he would do that. I understand where you're coming from. Like be like, hey man, I you know what? I need to get the surgery. Well, let, let me let me wait because these uh, I, I don't want them to go bring in somebody else to reflect. Because think about it, him getting a season-ending surgery, it ends his season. So whether the Ravens were to get somebody right here right now, if they were if they were were to have gotten somebody before the trade deadline. Um, if they were to have traded for somebody, okay, they would get somebody then. But then this the season ending injury is happening. So it's happening one way or another. So next off season, well, even though you know the Ravens don't, they don't really move like that, like that to really I don't think they would get somebody to replace Rashad like that. But who knows? Maybe something will change. But it my point is that whether it happened now or it happened later, uh, it's a chance that it could happen to where the Ravens I mean, they should bring in somebody else of significance because, again, you can't put all your eggs into the Rashad Bateman basket. Um, but it's one of those things that they're going to have to get somebody one way or another. Do the next Hollywood. The next question came from I got Phil Mon. He said, Ain't great. Hope you and the fam have been blessed. Don't get it twisted by my title. I'm not talking about Duvernay and Hollywood's play style because Duve got hands and I wouldn't trust Hollywood to catch them punts or kickoffs. Don't do my guy like that. Yeah, yeah, you ain't got to do my guy like that. But let, let me keep going. He said, my thoughts are more with how Lamar views Duvernay. Uh, with the unfortunate news of Bateman out for the season and Mark out for now, Lamar was looking for quick reads and whoever was open. I'm worried about Lamar going back to these habits of looking for the same guys when Duve starts to be on the field more and Mark being back. Uh, I'm not worried in the regular season because our schedule is favorable after the bye, and I believe the teams... I believe the playoff teams for the AFC are kind of set with the Bills, Chiefs, Ravens, Titans, Bengals, Dolphins, and Chargers. My worry... Excuse me, is that Lamar, as Lamar continues to build chemistry with Duve like he's done a lot this season, he'll lean on him a lot like he did Hollywood and in the playoffs, and that's an easier way for teams to game plan. See, my thing with that, um, if you got chemistry with somebody, that's great. Um, if you can rely on them, then that's great. It's just, um, and for, for him to have somebody that he can rely on, that's a beautiful thing um, because that means you can rely on that person. Uh, but the thing, the, the only problem would be if, you you look into that person in different situations, and if that person is not available, um, then you end up forcing it to that person. That that's that's the only time it's a problem. Or if you you focus so much on that person that you're not examining the whole field, you're not examining going through all your reason whatnot. That will be when it could be a problem. But having somebody to rely on, that's great. Um, but it's just you want to be able to rely on other people too. You may not be able to rely on them as much as your person, as your go-to guy. Um, that's why they call go-to guys. But, yes, anyway, uh, he said, uh, with D-Rob looking to be out against the Saints, well, he did end up playing, so that was cool. Uh, it's another player that Lamar was starting to give the ball to as well. If Lamar does find himself spreading the ball around more, who do you think will be getting these touches besides Mark and Do? Proche, Wallace, D-Jax, D-Rob, no tight end as a choice. Well, yeah, a little bit of everybody. A little bit of everybody. When you spread that ball around, everybody gets a little piece of the pie, so that's a beautiful thing. Uh, and he said, also, I'm really optimistic about our defense. The depth on that side should make everyone's jobs easier, especially because Marcus Williams is back. Well, he ain't back yet. He will be coming back. Uh, given he won't play against the Saints and we have our bye, the first game after the bye will have been six weeks. And even if he's back, let's say, against the Broncos in week 13, which is pretty realistic, our secondary will continue to come to form. Yes. Uh, our tackling with him, Roquan Smith, and an improving queen should fix that side that we struggled with last year. That's true. Uh, until Bowser and Ojabo, uh, I'm re really excited about him, are back. I'd like to see some mixes of delayed blitzes with Roquan or a disguise blitz pre-snap of Hamilton, Queen, and Roquan, and maybe mix it up. Mix up who comes when the play starts. Hey, that's what they did, too. That's what they did. You saw the blitzes with Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen. You saw the blitzes with Marlon Humphrey and Kyle Hamilton. So, yeah. This should help away get some more pressures because I've heard about the double teams you get but haven't paid too much attention to it. Uh, I've been appreciative of the slow approach Ravens have had with Bowser and Ajabo because our pass rush, I think, uh, is bottom five in pressure percentage, but the coaching staff hasn't felt pressure to bring them back. Uh, Justin Houston being our best pass rusher is hilarious, but I'm here for it until our guys can be back. Hey, yeah, that, that, that is not something that I thought would end up happening this year. If you would ask me who I think the best pass rusher is going to be going into the season, I would have said uh, Adafi away. I said it out very way quick, but 
Justin Houston been winning that by a landslide. Another question and last thought. If the Ravens can have a well-rounded wild card game and go against the Bills or Chiefs in a divisional round, do you expect a healthier defense to give significant problems to the Chiefs and Bills offense? I know we're a long way away, and this is assuming we make it, but like I said earlier, I'm sure we make it. Yeah, I think so for sure because of um, the defense. And, and the defense in the, in the, in the, in the playoffs, they, for the most part, uh, they've, they've usually done their thing. They've usually done their thing. It's, it's the offense that has been just the biggest uh, hiccup. The offense has been having the biggest uh, struggles. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the, the, the defense will certainly give the offense some opportunities uh, to go out there and do their thing. Will we finish? Next question came from my guy, Conscience. He said, hey, Engraven, this is my first question after four or five years, LOL. I hope the family is doing good. Uh, the team is getting better week by week, and we still have players coming off of injuries in the way. The schedule is looking. I only see us losing two games, Max, if any. My question is, do you see us making a run that will make us forget about the 2019 season just because we will make the deepest run in the postseason since Lamar was drafted. Maybe a trip to the desert if things continue to shape out and we finish games. Ooh, that's a question right there. That's a question. Make us forget about 2019? Because mm. what, they, what they won, they won 12 games in a row that year because, yeah, they started off 2-2 two and two, won 12 in a row. Um, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, I just say the the biggest question mark right now it would for me would be the offense, it would be the offense. Um, and that's why con consistency is important. Um, the the missed opportunities, things 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 that they missed on, uh, they got they got to hit on that stuff. Uh, Lamar he done missed a couple of throws throughout uh, the season. That's um they they've been some big throws. So they've been some missed opportunities. I mean, missed opportunities for some big plays and. Again, with the offense, you got to be perfect. With this, with this offense, the passing offense, you got to be perfect. Everything got to be perfect for this passing offense to work because the volume is so low. The, the opportunities are so limited. So, and that makes it hard. That makes it harder for everybody. Um, so, but with, with the way the offense is constructed, like I said, everything's got to be perfect. So, he got to make those opportunities. Guys got to catch the ball. Guys got to get open. Greg Roman, the, the call, play call's got to be right. Like, with Russian offense, they can make, they can make some mistakes there because Russian offense is heavy, it's powerful, and it's doing its thing, and, and we're glad about that. Um, but it's the passing offense where, it's, again, it's got to be perfect. Got to be perfect. Um, so, yeah, we'll see, man. But I, I do I, – I would love if they did that because, um, you know, again, 2019 is like the biggest gift and curse uh, in recent Ravens history. Next question came from my guy Elijah. He said, uh, Ronnie Stanley. First, I want to say thanks for all your content and your hard work that you put into the channel. Team Keep It Clean really appreciate you. Uh, don't know how many times you make our day, but my question is, oh, no, nah, y'all make my day, man. Straight up. I, I appreciate this a lot, though, man. Uh, he said, my question is, uh, everyone has said Ronnie Stanley has returned to pro ball form. From what I've been watching, I think he has maybe some rust here and there, but pro football focus has him rated as the number two pass protector. What are your thoughts? Hope the family and you are healthy and enjoy your vacation. You deserve it with all the hard work. Appreciate that, Elijah. Thank you. Um, Ryan Stanley has been good. Again, like we talked about earlier, somebody asked about the offensive line improving. So, hey, again, it ain't no coincidence with Ronnie Stanley being back. Offensive line has been getting better and better and better. And this is a beautiful thing, especially as you go down the stretch. You go down the stretch. Um, the run game has been looking a lot better. It was crazy because early this early this season, at the beginning of the season, the pass for the Ravens team it was so weird that the pass protection was actually better than the run blocking. And now the run blocking, they 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 done caught up. Um, and a lot of times it seemed like they surpassed uh, the pass protection. But they've been doing a really good job. And, and Ronnie Stanley, um, it is it, it has been a wise decision uh, for the Ravens. It's paid off. Uh, because for the most part this year, they've been taking their sweet time with guys coming back from injury. Uh, and it's paid off. It paid off for Gus Edwards, obviously, because he came back. And from his first game of the season, he was going off uh, with J.K. Dobbins when he did play. Um, he had he had looked good. He got limited carries with him. Because with, with, with him, they like they had him ready. They put him in, but they were still taking it really slow. Um, so it, it's, it's helped a lot. Uh, so with Ronnie Stanley, it's been... Um, it's been well worth the wait. Bateman again. Next question came from my guy, John. He said, what's up, engraving the team? Keep it clean. Uh, with Bateman, uh, he's done it again. Uh, he's injured his foot. Um, it's unfortunate for his young career, but he will probably be now labeled as injury prone. 
Uh, we need a number one now, uh, and there aren't too many out there for us to pick up to be that number one. Uh, I mean, the big three that I can think of will be Will Fuller, Odell Beckham Jr., and T.Y. Hilton. My question is, who do you think would be the better fit for the team? I mean, Odell Beckham is a big name, but he's been injury prone. Yes. He, all three of them guys. All three of them guys. Odell Beckham Jr., Will Fuller, and T.Y. Hilton. All three of them done had a lot of injuries. But anyway... He said, uh, T.Y. is solid, but I think DuVernay is similar. Will Fuller, I think uh, his best is definitely behind him. Again, who would you who would you look at? And it doesn't even have to be from those three. Uh, with those three, I say sign all three. So I sign all three because like they can help cancel out each other. We talked about this before. You sign all three. Um, so if one gets injured, hey, you may still have the other two. If two get injured, you'll still have the other one. So you're always going to have at least one of them to help out. And the next question came from my guy, Vincent. He said, PQ or Peters? Hey, Graven, you've been talking about what it means for PQ since we traded for Roquan. I know you talked about it being the end for PQ and Clark in Baltimore, but here's my take on it. What if it meant the end for Clark and Peters and that the Ravens go after a cornerback in the first round of the draft next year? I, we, we were talking about Peters before Roquan was even a thing. Um, so yeah, that's like I think it, it. I think it's already been the end for Peters anyway, um, even before Roquan Smith was traded for. Um, I just l would love for Peters to stay, but I just I think Ravens are done. I think they they both gonna move on, go their separate ways. Um, and yeah, Ravens are gonna probably yeah draft the cornerback early. Uh, probably maybe like in the second, maybe third, probably like the second round, something like that. No, they got Pepe Williams, they got Jalen Alma Davis, uh, they got Brandon Stevens, but maybe he'll stay at safe. I don't know what his position gonna be because his position just keep flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. Um, that's not really good for your development. But anyway, that's a whole nother story. But yeah, I think Peters is. Um, I, I think he's going. Uh, regardless But anyway He did say Why break up something That could be great With the best inside Linebacker duo in the league Because Ravens do stuff Early rather than late When it comes to Trading people And especially if, if There's somebody That they know They're not going to resign They trade them earlier Rather than later uh, He said the Ravens Could lock down The middle of the field With PQ and Roquan And let our pass rushers Do their job And stop dropping back In coverage <laughs> Thanks And keep, keep, keep up The good work uh, <laughs> That ball was funny. I got to read it again. He said the Ravens could lock down the middle of the field with PQ and Roquan and let our pass rushers do their job and stop dropping back in coverage. I appreciate it. Though. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. Got to made it. Boy, that's my homie. Ain't that right and graven. Right and graven. Shout out to Graven.